Neon signs are a really unique form of lighting. In essence, when you look at a neon sign, you're actually staring directly at plasma, the fourth state of matter. Powered by high voltage, they exhibit some really interesting properties that are unknown to most people. Hey everybody, my name's Jay and you're watching Plasma Channel. Now, I'll bet that you're here because you look at the world just a little differently than most people, don't you? Heck, if you're anything like me, then you see magic in the world all around you. And if that's the case, then you're going to like what you're about to see. After experimenting with a neon sign that I've had for a while, I noticed a phenomenon that, quite simply, I've never seen before. By manipulating the power, it's possible to control the plasma with your bare hands. You can drag it along and even suffocate it. This is plasma manipulation. So this phenomenon is wicked cool, and I haven't even shown you the cool footage yet. But two quick things before I begin. In the footage that you just saw, no, I did not have a magnet in my hands. And second, I'm using AC current, not DC current. In fact, this all started because I was trying to see if you could power a neon sign with high voltage DC and treat the neon sign a bit like a cathode ray tube. Well, the short answer is I had limited success. Though I got a little bit of deflection using a strong magnet, it's, as you can see, not that impressive. Well, those results were pretty discouraging because I was hoping to get some really cool plasma deflection on camera, and that's all I got. So I basically gave up on using high voltage DC and just started screwing around with the power levels using high voltage, high frequency AC. And that is when I saw this. Tejas! No, actually, watch what happens to Texas as I slowly apply more voltage. You can see the plasma snake along linearly inside the tube. This is 1000 volts, 2000, 3, 4, and my power source tops out at 4,500. Personally, I think this behavior is fascinating, but it really doesn't compare to what you're about to see. If the plasma is lit by a radiated field as opposed to a direct connection, like here on the right, you can direct the plasma by dragging your fingers along the tube. Here it's staying on the left side, and we can force it back to the right side. Watch my finger, and it stays. Whether it's the right side or the left side, you have complete control over which direction the plasma grows in. <sighs> Amazing, right? You ever seen that? I've never seen that before. The plasma follows your finger up and down the glass tube wherever you command it to go. I mean, <laughs> that's wicked cool. And the trick is, the neon only acts this way when it's completely underpowered. You put too much power in it, and it won't act this way. So essentially, neon signs can act like plasma globes. Your finger placement determines the path that the electricity takes, and therefore where the plasma is. Now, after I documented the whole finger dragging phenomenon and captured the footage that you've already seen in this video, and scraped my brains off the wall, I did a little bit more experimenting with you know, this neon sign in particular. And I found that if you maintain a really low power level, neon signs have one more trick up their sleeve. Depending on how hard you squeeze the tube, you can control how far up and down the tube the plasma goes. You can take this a step further and also squeeze the entire tube and snuff out the plasma and suffocate it. Go to sleep now, plasma. If at this point you're asking yourself what causes this whole plasma phenomenon, you're likely not alone because after a bit of thinking, I'm fairly certain that this whole situation can be explained with what's called capacitive coupling. Capacitive coupling is actually a really crucial concept to understand, and it allows for energy transfer between two conductors that are separated by an insulator. It works only with AC, and in particular, it works really well with high frequency AC, like what I'm using here with this 15 kilohertz supply. The plasma itself is the first conductor, the glass is the insulator, and my skin is the second conductor. Here's how it works. When I touch the glass, the little amount of power that's present in the ionized gas capacitively couples with my skin and is encouraged to fully discharge at the point of the glass that I touch. This is the exact same science behind touching a plasma globe and the same reason why smaller Tesla coils don't need a solid ground connection and can just use a counterpoise instead. Ultimately, that's my best guess at the science behind this. And if you think you might have some additional information, might know what's going on, please feel free to leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. 
Also, if you'd like to support longer, more frequent videos for Plasma Channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Thanks for stopping by, and don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to Plasma Channel. Check us out on other social media, and feel free to check out our various other episodes. With science every two weeks, you stay classy.